In this video, I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step guide to show you how to create a data pipeline for your industrial IoT solution using MQTT and Apache Kafka. To demonstrate, I'm going to use this demonstration that consists of devices that you'd typically find in an industrial facility. I'll be simulating an industrial boiler using these sensors and then I'll create an MQTT and Kafka pipeline to move this boiler data from the edge here in my studio to a data center in the cloud. But before we dive into the demo, let us take a moment to understand why we need to combine these two technologies to put together such a data architecture. To understand why you need an MQTT to Kafka data pipeline, we need to begin by putting the immensity of manufacturing data into context. And to do that, let us perform a comparison of a typical industrial IoT scenario with a simple commercial IoT solution. If you have, say, a vehicle tracking IoT solution, you'd typically read and publish about 5 to 10 data points, which may include location, gas level, weight, and so forth, every minute. In contrast, if you have, for example, a cookie or sweet factory, it is not uncommon to find a furnace that is over 1,000 measurements that you need to read and process every second. And you'd have many such furnaces in a single factory. When you do the maths, you can quickly see that your industrial IoT solution will be required to stream and process millions of data samples per day. And this necessity of real-time data streaming in industrial facilities will continue to grow as companies digitally transform. So what is needed for an industrial IoT solution is a real-time data infrastructure that would process these large volumes of data reliably and in a persistent manner at scale in order to make it readily available to value-adding enterprise applications. What Kafka offers for such requirements is its ability to serve as a very large and reliable storage and distribution system with high throughput. It essentially acts as a buffer for the real-time stream of information coming from your industrial facility and then it timely feeds it into multiple enterprise applications such as data science and analytics apps. However, Kafka is not well suited for structuring communication with industrial IoT devices and sensors, which is a domain in which MQTT really shines. Let us look at a couple of reasons why that is the case. Firstly, Kafka is built for a data center environment where there is stable network and almost unlimited compute resources. And yet, IIoT components mostly comprise of small applications, devices and sensors running in unreliable and unstable environments. Meanwhile, due to its lightweight nature, MQTT works excellently in resource-constrained environments. Secondly, Kafka is not capable of handling large amounts of topics and connected devices. On the other hand, MQTT is really built for dynamically scaling up to hundreds of millions of topics on a single cluster. Furthermore, most industrial IoT devices and sensors don't have the capability to connect to Kafka natively. This is due to the resource-intensive and complex requirements for a Kafka client. What's more is that each broker in a Kafka cluster needs to be addressed directly. On the other hand, in an MQTT broker cluster, devices connect to a broker through a load balancer. One last thing worth mentioning is the fact that Kafka does not deploy features that are crucial for IoT such as Keep Alive and Last Will and Testament which MQTT implements. Having said that, it's plain to see why the true strength of an industrial IoT data pipeline lies in using MQTT to structure communication with devices and sensors and using Kafka to integrate the data from the devices to business applications in a data center. In this demo, I'm going to deploy a Hive MQ MQTT broker cluster on Azure Cloud. I'll then use Node-RED to collect data from industrial devices in my demo setup, convert it to JSON format, and publish the data as MQTT messages to the Hive MQ broker cluster. Next, I'll create a Kafka cluster on Confluent Cloud and then use the Hive MQ Kafka extension, which implements the native Kafka protocol inside the Hive MQ MQTT broker to forward the MQTT messages to the Kafka cluster on Confluent Cloud 
where it will be made available for consumption by a large number of enterprise applications. So let's get started. Now I'm going to show you how to deploy a Hive MQ MQTT broker cluster on Azure Cloud. To begin, I'll visit the Hive MQ GitHub repo on this URL. I'll then select the ARM Quick Start Templates directory. And then from here, I'll click on the Deploy to Azure button. This will take me to my Azure portal and present an interface that allows me to customize my deployment. So here I'll leave my subscription account as default. Next, I'll create a new resource group. And then I'll leave the selected region as East US. Next, I'll enter my admin username for this deployment. And then I'll enter my password here. Next, I'll enter the HiveMQ MQTT broker version that I want to deploy. For demonstration, I'll deploy one node for my cluster. When that is done, I'll click on review and create. And then go ahead and click on create to start the deployment. When my deployment is complete, I'll click on go to resource group. Now here you'll notice that my deployment has provisioned a number of Azure services, which include a virtual machine, storage account, and a load balancer. To get the public IP address of my MQTT broker cluster, I'll select the Hive MQ load balancer public IP. And then I'll go ahead and copy this IP address. Next, to confirm that my deployment was successful, I need to access the Hive MQ control center of my MQTT broker cluster. So I'll use this IP address. and then access the endpoint at port 8080. Now I'm going to show you how I'm publishing MQTT data from my demo station to my Hive MQ MQTT broker cluster on Azure. I'm collecting the sensor data from my Groove Rio device so what you're looking at here is the interface of my ignition scatter software showing live data representing a plant boiler. I have boiler temperature, tank level, feed water flow rate, and output steam flow rate. Now to publish this information to my Hive MQ MQTT broker cluster, I'm using Node-RED running on my remote I.O. device. This is the node red flow that is reading the boiler sensor data, packaging it into a JSON object, and then publishing it to my Hive MQ MQTT broker on Azure. For purposes of this demo, I'm publishing every five seconds. And then when I open the publish to Hive MQ broker node, you will see here my Hive MQ broker cluster connection details. And then more importantly, I'm publishing this data to a topic called plant slash boilers. Now to add more context to my demo, I've simulated data for a second boiler, which I have on this node red floor. And I'm publishing the boiler 02 data to the same Hive MQ MQTT broker on Azure under the same topic plant slash boilers. Now to test that I'm actually publishing boiler data to my Hive MQ MQTT broker cluster, I'll use an MQTT client software called MQTT.fx. I've already connected it to my broker, so I'll go ahead and subscribe to plant slash boilers. And when I do that, you can see MQTT data flowing through coming from my boiler 01 and boiler 02 of my demo station. What I want to be able to do is to forward this data to an Apache Kafka cluster using my Hive MQ Kafka extension. And to do that, I need to create the Apache Kafka cluster on Confluent Cloud. So I'll do that next. 
Now I'm going to show you how to create an Apache Kafka cluster on the Confluent Cloud platform. So I'm on the Confluent Cloud page and I'll proceed by clicking on Get Started Free. And then I'll sign in using my Google account. Okay, so I'm logged into Confluent Cloud. So here I'll proceed by creating a basic Apache Kafka cluster. Next, I'll select Microsoft Azure Cloud for hosting. And then I'll leave my region as East US and availability as single zone. And then I'll click on continue. Next, I'll give my cluster a name. I'll call it demo cluster. And then I'll go ahead and click on launch cluster. Okay, so I've successfully created an Apache Kafka cluster on Confluent Cloud. Now that my Kafka cluster is running, the next thing I need to do is to create a Kafka topic to which I'll be streaming boiler IoT data coming from my Hive MQ MQTT broker. To do that, I'll click on topics, create a topic, I'll call my topic boilers. And then I'll assign three partitions to it. And then proceed by clicking on create with defaults. Okay, so my topic has been successfully created. Now if I go under messages here, you can see that we currently do not have any new messages. So to start publishing messages to this Kafka cluster, I need to connect my Hive MQ MQTT broker to this cluster. And to do that, I need to get the connection details, which I can find on the cluster settings page. So I'll go to cluster overview, select cluster settings. And this here is the information that I need to connect to this Kafka cluster from my MQTT broker. In addition to my cluster connection endpoint details on Confluent Cloud, I also need to generate an API key and secret pair to use as an authentication mechanism for my Hive MQ Kafka extension. To do that, I'll go under API keys here. And once I'm here, I can click on add key to generate the key and secret pair. And I've already done that which means that I now have enough details to start transmitting MQTT data from my Hive MQ broker to my Kafka cluster on Confluent Cloud. Now I'm going to show you how to configure my Hive MQ Kafka extension to enable my MQTT broker to forward messages to my Kafka cluster. First, I need to access the Kafka extension configuration file. To do that, I'm going to use party to SSH into the Azure Virtual Machine where my Hive MQ broker was deployed. I'll enter the public IP address of my broker cluster and then select open. I'm successfully logged into my Azure Virtual Machine using the details that I set during the deployment of my broker cluster. Next, I need to go to the directory of my VM that stores the application program files. And then I go into the Hive MQ directory. Next, I'll go into the extensions directory. Then open the Hive MQ Kafka extension directory. Once I'm inside the Kafka extension directory, I'll first need to remove the disabled file to enable my Kafka extension. And then I'll rename the Kafka configuration.example.xml file into Kafka configuration.xml.
When that is done, I'll open up the configuration file. So this is what my HiveMQ Kafka extension config file looks like after I've entered the Confluent Cloud Kafka cluster detail. First, I have included the bootstrap server's URL address here, and then I've enabled TLS. Then under the authentication tag, I used my Confluent Cloud API key as the username and my API secret as the password. Next, under MQTT to Kafka mapping, I entered the plant slash boilers topic under MQTT topic filter. This is the MQTT topic to which my demo unit is publishing the boiler data. I'm essentially specifying that I would like all MQTT data on this topic to be forwarded to my Kafka cluster. Then finally, under Kafka topic, I specify my Kafka topic to which I need all this data forwarded, which is boilers. Now, it's important to note here that after saving this config file, I don't need to restart my HiveMQ broker or anything. It does a hot reload. To confirm that the connection to my Kafka cluster on Confluent Cloud was successfully established, I'll go back to the dashboard. And then here you can see that Kafka is appearing on the sidebar and that the current status says all checks successful. Now, let's go back to my Confluent Cloud platform to see if we're getting any data. And here I'll navigate to topics. And then click into my Kafka topic. And then under messages. We can see that I'm getting messages coming from my HiveMQ broker to this Kafka cluster on Confluent Cloud. And this is happening every five seconds. So we've successfully created an IIoT data pipeline for collecting data from a plant flow, publishing it to a HiveMQ MQTT broker, forwarding that to a Confluent Cloud Apache Kafka cluster, and then having it as an output, which can then be consumed by a multiple number of enterprise applications. Also, data can be sent down from the enterprise to the plant flow using the same data pipeline. For more videos like this, please check out the HiveMQ YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.